But our modern universe is a complex mosaic of matter. When we marvel through our telescopes at the fantastic structure of our universe and its galaxies, you gotta ask, where did that come from? Matter in the universe arranges itself on a vast cosmic web. Galaxies and galaxies clusters are strung out on sheets and filaments. It seems this intricate web is organized by a cosmic architect. Space-time. It shaped everything, from planets to galaxies, atoms to cities. The universe is made of space-time. Whatever the substance is, time and space bound together, that's expanding and creating the universe we see around us. It's everything. Space-time is what the universe really is. It's a hard concept to grasp. It tracks more stuff, and it's just a runaway process. Gravity increased, pulling in more and more matter. It got more dense, got more dense, got more dense, and then before you know it, you've got a star, and you've got a bunch of stars, and you start to make a galaxy. And these stars evolved and began forming large structures. They sort of burned through all their nuclear fuel and exploded, and they made all the heavier elements. And with time, we got down to having things like planets, atmospheres, people, all the things that we care about today. All of this started out as energy fluctuations in expanding space-time. These, at first, very tiny fluctuations became these gigantic structures that we actually see today. And over billions of years, that material began to coalesce into individual galaxies, stars, planets, and you. Fluctuations in the expansion of space-time laid out the pattern of the universe. The curvature of space-time controlled the evolution of everything we see today. If space-time didn't have that property of bringing mass together, then all we would be is a thin haze of hydrogen gas. Not a very interesting universe at all. If space-time didn't curve because of matter inside of it, the universe would be a really weird place. I mean, uh, there'd be no gravity. There'd be nothing to make things stick together. No force of gravity means no stars, no planet. We think it's been around from the beginning of everything, quietly pulling the strings of the cosmos. And sometimes a glimpse of this elusive puppet master in action. 2016, astronomers witness a strange optical phenomenon a weird circle of light, like a cosmic halo. This is actually what you would see in the sky if your eyes were as sensitive as a telescope. They're real. This is not some artifact of how we adjust the images. Something is actually bending space and time itself into a lens. That something is a red galaxy, which is over seven billion light years away from Earth. It's bending the light from a blue galaxy, which should be hidden behind it. It's called gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is an amazing phenomenon because it demonstrates explicitly what Einstein told us, that space is curved. And space acts like a lens, just like the lens of the act. And when we look out at the universe, we see all of that. It's remarkable. Mass from the foreground galaxy creates curves in space-time, which we know as gravity. Light follows those curves and is warped, so it bends around the galaxy. Massive objects, like clusters of galaxies, can bend the path of light through space-time, a lot like a piece of glass can bend the path of light. So when we look at a distant galaxy as the light passes through a galaxy cluster, we see multiple images of the same galaxy. We see arcs and circles as if that galaxy cluster were made of glass. We are seeing the warping of space-time literally played out in front of our very eyes. Gravitational lensing gives us a way of seeing the effects of space-time on light. But it's only an indirect observation of space-time. Could there be another way 
of experiencing space-time right here on Earth. Not everything that happens in space can be seen. Sometimes you have to listen for it as well. Believe it or not, space is a material much like this iron sheet. And like this iron, space can distort. If I put a very heavy weight on this sheet of metal, its shape is gonna change and it's gonna distort. Amazingly, space can carry waves. And so can this iron sheet. But to get this sheet waving, you need something really powerful. Something like me and my hammer. Did you see those waves travel? Change frequency as the two black holes get closer and collide. It's a swoop up in frequency that sounds like What we were hearing in that were two black holes that are orbiting around one another and then coming together. That was it. Listening to ripples in space-time has given us a powerful new tool to investigate the universe. We are now hearing things in gravity for the first time. It's a sense that we have never been able to apply to the universe and we're beginning to learn what is out there. The observation of gravitational waves from black holes is one of the most significant findings in by anyone in the recent hundred years. It's hard to overstate the importance of gravitational wave astronomy. Much like when Galileo first pointed his telescope at the stars to see something new, we now have an entirely new window into the universe. Gravitational lensing and gravitational waves offer us an insight into the complex relationship between gravity and space. The gravity, the greater the distortion. What has the most gravity? A black hole. Out in space near a strong gravitational tug from a black hole, clocks can do funny things. And this is where things start getting really interesting. Around a black hole, space-time warps and twists, slowing time down. Scientists dream of sending a probe there to test their hypothesis. There's a famous way of thinking about this called the twin paradox, where two twins are born at exactly the same time, right? So they're the same age. But one of them zips very, very close to a black hole, hangs out a while, and then comes back. If I had an identical twin who stayed back on Earth while I flew near a black hole, when we had our daily video phone calls, he would see me go, oh, and I would see him say, oh my goodness, I'm a little bit concerned about you because you're talking so funny. We would literally notice that time is running at a different pace for the other one. The closer to the black hole, the slower time passes. If instead of coming back home, I accidentally fell backwards into the black hole, my twin back on Earth would see me slow down even more and go, oh, and completely grind the hall and seem frozen on the event horizon. Time appears to stand still. Well, I would just have a sinking feeling that I would never be able to come home again. But if the twin could escape from the black hole, he would be returning to the future. Maybe it's only been a few days or, or weeks experienced by the one that traveled to the black hole, while the other is, you know, gray-haired and has grandkids by now, has lived decades here on Earth. The black hole warps space-time so much that the ultimate science fiction fantasy becomes reality. Time travel is a staple of science fiction, and we know that time travel into the past appears to be ruled out in our universe. But time travel into the future is totally acceptable. Time travel isn't possible just yet, but space-time has a very real effect on our daily lives. It controls how we age. The key to different rates of flows of time is gravity. If you experience a different gravitational environment, you will have a different flow of time. As I climb up these stairs and I put myself further away from the mass of the Earth, 
my own clock runs a little bit faster. If you go down closer to the surface, the more your clock slows down. We have sensitive enough clocks that we can measure this different flow of time. Exaggerate this effect and we would see the flow of time change in front of us. Those closer to the Earth would look slowed down. Those higher up, the opposite. Which means the wealthy in their penthouses actually would age faster than people on the ground. This is a mind-blowing concept, but it's reality. Earth's gravity even controls time high above the planet. Twelve and a half thousand miles up, there's an array of global positioning satellites crucial to the navigation systems in our cars and cell phones. We here on Earth use the global positioning system as a way of, okay, most people these days would be lost if they have to go more than about a kilometer from their house unless they have Yes app on their phone them where to go. The GPS receive phone passes signals over four satellites to figure out exactly where you are. It's an exercise in precision timing. On board each satellite is an atomic, like space-time, Dark energy is all around us. Freezes. The freeze. 